Welcome. We're here to take a tour of From Suffrage to Me Too, Groundbreaking Women in Sonoma County. My name is Eric Stanley. I'm the curator of history here at the Museum of Sonoma County. And along with me is Megan Kane, our Registrar of Collections. Our exhibition From Suffrage to Me Too focuses on the 100 years from the ratification of the 19th Amendment, giving women the constitutional right to vote all the way up to present times. Part of the point of the exhibition is to look at that century from 1920 to 2020. And within that, to put groundbreaking women from Sonoma County in different eras across that century, giving you an idea of what women faced at different periods of time, because the issues changed, the tactics changed, and women had to face different hurdles to achieve their rights. So this part of the exhibition is a timeline giving an idea of the long struggle for women's rights. The fight for women's rights neither began nor ended with the ratification of the 19th Amendment. So this gives you a sense here that the struggle for women's rights goes all the way back to the constitutional period when the decision on suffrage was set up to take place state by state. And we see things on this timeline, uh, everything from the 1848 Declaration of Sentiments that was done at Seneca Falls, New York, where 300 women and men led by Elizabeth Cady Stanton uh, put in a plea for the end of discrimination against women. This is often marked as the beginning of the suffrage movement, but really it even goes back farther than that uh, and extends after it. This also has some local references, including to uh, 1850s pre-Civil War Sonoma County, when there were women such as Joanna Huff and Elizabeth Lewis, who were both stock raisers, and Guadalupe Vasquez West, an innkeeper, who were uh, successful businesswomen who held licenses in their own names. But these were unusual circumstances. And this timeline takes us all the way up to 1896, which was the failed referendum for the votes for women in California, setting the stage for the fight for the ratification of the 19th Amendment. This section is called Suffrage and the Road to Reform and covers the 1890s up to about 1920. After the failed referendum on the right for women to vote in 1896, advocates for women's suffrage changed tactics they really took on a whole new strategy that favored coalition building with progressives and outreach to immigrant voters, organized laborers, and others. The 1910 victory by the progressive wing of the state Republican Party set the stage for a special election on suffrage in California, and suffragists had only 10 months to organize. Without the backing of major political parties, they turned to innovative methods, including distributing thousands of leaflets in numerous languages, hoping to reach the state's growing immigrant population. And in Sonoma County, there were a number of leaders, Francis McGoffey Martin. Uh, Fanny McGoffey succeeded in two male dominated professions, including school administration and law at a time when few women could break through these professional barriers. McGoffey was one of the leaders of the suffrage movement in Sonoma County, an outstanding public speaker with obvious determination. She was at the forefront of suffrage rallies during the 1911 California referendum. The banner you can see here is from the Sonoma County chapter of the Women's Christian Temperance Union. This banner was used in the 1912 events for this organization. Originally, the WCTU was founded to further the temperance movement, but they also expanded into women's suffrage and participated both in the 1911 referendum and in many others. This section of the exhibition focuses on the period from 1920 to 1940, which is really a study in contrast for women's rights. In the 1920s, not only did public and political life undergo drastic changes for women, but their private lives changed as well. Riding the wave from prohibition and women's voting rights, as well as greater inclusion in the workforce during World War I, women agitated for more than the vote and included issues like workplace fairness and safety 
and the minimum wage. In Sonoma County, the 1920s was really a peak of agricultural, the agricultural economy. So things were going pretty well economically. But then, of course, in the 1930s, the, the Great Depression hit, and that set back the fight for women's rights. The issues that had been prominent in the suffrage era and then in the 20s, this kind of struggle to increase the notoriety of, of women's rights and the acceptability of it, took a setback with, with economic depression. Augusta Metzger was an excellent example of a creative woman during this period. She became one of the first preservationists in Santa Rosa and created one of the first historical districts in the town. Here you can see a picture, uh, the hand drawing of her when she was a young woman, as well as a chair from her home. This chapter of the exhibition gives us a look at the period from 1940 to 1960, a really important time in the development of women's rights. This, of course, was the period of World War II in which millions of Americans left to fight overseas, American men mainly. And filling a lot of those roles, those departed roles, were women stepping into the workplace, sometimes for the first time. This is the period of Rosie the Riveter, which came to sim symbolize women who filled America's factories and shipyards. But in truth, in some ways, Rosie the Riveter was a myth. A much higher percentage of African-American women, for instance, already worked outside the home uh, before the war. Nonetheless, as the war ended, millions of women lost their war work jobs. Um, so it was another period of time in which there was one step or two steps forward and another step back, which is often the case in this continuing struggle for women's rights. In this section, we see a couple of local women, important women highlighted, including Song Wang Borbo, who was a resident of Santa Rosa's Chinatown, which has since disappeared, um, who was an advocate for the preservation of the history of her community, as well as Essie Parrish, a Kashaya Pomo woman who became an important leader uh, of the Kashaya Pomo and worked hard to preserve traditions of her culture, as well as her language and the art of basket making. So both of these women became incredibly important this, in this time in the realm of cultural and historical preservation. The switchboard on the right-hand side speaks to the many different professions that women entered into in the early part of the 20th century. Early on, young boys were originally hired to work switchboards, but by the 1930s and 40s, the vast majority of switchboard operators were actually women. This section of switchboard comes from the AT&T building in Santa Rosa. The uniform you can see here is from the American Women's Voluntary Services. This was an organization that was founded in the United States to support the men who went off to war during World War II. The local chapter in Sonoma County was founded by May Grace and did a great deal during the war to support the community as well as its soldiers fighting overseas. This chapter of the exhibition focuses on the era from 1960 to 1989. And of course, the 1960s were a time of great social change in the United States. American women were truly spurred to action. Having gone through the monumental civil rights activism earlier in the decade, they began to focus on their own rights. And their efforts converged on seeking equal pay for equal work and the right to self-expression. And there was a definite effort to reach outward and make changes through legislation, become more involved in politics. This was also the era of the attempt to ratify the Equal, the equal Rights Amendment, which became a primary focus of many women in organization in the late 1970s. One of those women's organizations was the Women's Support Network, founded here in Sonoma County in the 1970s. This organization originally started as an umbrella organization for other local women's organizations. It eventually expanded to become the National Women's History Week project and is still active today as the National Women's History Alliance. In this view, we see a section about Doris Sloan, another groundbreaking woman in Sonoma County's history. And her connection was to the fight over the nuclear power plant at Bodega Head. 
proposed in the 19, late 1950s by PG&E, the nuclear plant was supposed to go right on the coast, in fact, right on top of the San Andreas Fault. A group of people were inspired to action to fight against the nuclear plant, and among them were a number of leading women, including Doris Sloan. She became a committed activist during this time to, to oppose the nuclear power plant. And women became heavily involved in this effort, and not, not just Doris, a number of people becoming involved in the environmental movement and making their voices heard, becoming active politically, appearing at public meetings, and uh, doing all kinds of, of action to prevent the construction of the nuclear plant. Um, so it wasn't just an environmental fight, but also an action that required political engagement and making your voice heard. And so it became also an important movement or an important moment in the women's movement, as well as a moment in the environmental movement. This gallery brings us to the end of the exhibition. This section called Marching On, appropriately enough, covers the period from 1990 up until the present time. The 1990s is sometimes said to be the beginning of a new wave of women's rights or third wave feminism. Focused on individualism and diversity, women turn more strongly to political power and action. What comes, comes out strongly in this section in this period of time are not only the successes that women have achieved, but still the ongoing nature of the struggle for women's rights. The articles of clothing you can see on the wall belong to Judy Sakaki, the current president of Sonoma State University and the first Japanese American woman to be named as a president in the California State University system. You can see here a traditional Japanese kimono belonging to her grandmother alongside Judy's own PhD doctoral robes. Uh, in another section in this gallery, we see the origin of the Me Too movement. The Me Too movement did not start with a tweet in 2017 as a great many people tend to believe. It began in 2006 with Tarana Burke, an Alabama youth camp director who published a Me Too MySpace page to help survivors of sexual violence. But it really wasn't until 2017 with a tweet by Alyssa Milano that propelled the Me Too movement into a viral hashtag. So in many ways, the Me Too movement also symbolizes the sort of fits and starts, ups and downs of the struggle for, for women's rights and getting full recognition. The fight for women's rights continues today, as you can see in the variety of posters on the left-hand wall. These posters were all gathered by members of the Museum of Sonoma County staff during the 2020 Women's March here in Santa Rosa, California. And so the exhibition makes an important point that the fight for suffrage in the early part of the century is far from the end of the story. The huge successes of fighting for suffrage in California in 1911 and then the constitutional amendment to guarantee women's suffrage in 1920 were really the beginning of what's a long century of fighting for women's rights. And we want to remind everyone that the quest for women's rights remains unfinished business.